Hey, what's going on YouTube? It's your boy Portavox77 and I'm um, back with another video. Um, normally I would do a live stream every time I do an on the spot video, um, but this one's a recorded one uh, so I could focus more on the topic that I want to talk about. Um, so I haven't chimed in personally on, on the whole more Japanese games, more JRPGs or whatever on the Xbox platform, on the Xbox One. Um, so I'm going to put in my two cents, uh, in this video, right now I'm playing games, chilling, whatever. Um, and what, what, what motivated me to make this video was I recently, I was watching, you know, me and Xbox, we would, we, you know, we were just bullshitting on Twitter, whatever. Um, but then he asked me to watch his podcast, you know, it's a good podcast, whatever. Um, so I see, oh, it's clean. It's a clean production. Um, the intro is off the hook. It's a, it's an off the hook intro. Um, I was like, holy shit, this guy went all out. His intro's good. I like his template layout. Shows live gameplay while podcasting. Um, I'm, I, I never seen a podcast like that. I'm pretty sure other people have done it. I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. But it's good. Um, it's, it's a very clean, high production. He, you, you could actually tell he takes his time to really make a great podcast. And it's just his edits and all that. It's on point. So shout out to Xbox 448. Um, especially if you're an Xbox dude, go check out his channel. Uh, and he has my boy K Mega on there, and he has two other dudes I'm not familiar with, but I know K Mega, me and K Mega. Just to get the record straight, me and K Mega are people. We are good friends on stuff like that. We just bullshit on on Twitter and on the multiplayer podcast because we, we understand people like that shit. People like the entertainment value of just you know of of just going in on stuff like that. But I have so I have very much respect for him and stuff like that, and he's he's an awesome dude. You know what I'm saying? And same thing like that. So I don't want anybody to think that we hate each other. And we, me and him, we could go out all day, but me, we, we understand. We, we, K Mager and I are both around the same age. So we understand like the whole Sega Genesis, Super Nintendo shit talking. You know what I'm saying? So yet we still play games together. We were from that generation where we could talk shit, but we will play games together. You younger dudes could learn a lesson from most older dudes where you could still talk shit, but you could still game. You know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, it's just games and stuff like that. But anyway, I'm planning to call this title Xbox Nation, You Need to Know Your History, right? And, and this has to deal with the JRPGs. And I'm, I'm going to explain. In order, in order to understand where I'm coming from, and this might be a long video, and I apologize. I know some people don't like long videos, but I, I don't know any other way to do it. You understand know what I'm saying? Um, listening to it in your car, you know, you, you, this is a face-to-face. -face. The reason why I'm doing face-to-face -face is so that way you can see the sincerity in what I'm about to talk about. Um, so I'm not bullshitting. This is no fanboy bullshit. This is just straight gaming. But in order for you to understand, I, I have to explain a little bit of where I'm coming from. All right? So that way we get a little context on what I'm talking about. All right? So I'm going to take this back to... to when I started gaming, I started gaming very young at four. You know? But from my memory, I remember gaming at six, seven, eight, whatever. Okay. There were things that was happening in gaming that I didn't, didn't even know that was happening. You understand know what I'm saying? At a certain point, I decided to start following the industry at the level of, of market share, game sales, um, and stuff like that. All right. And, and that started around the PS1 and 64 era. That's when I started going beyond just reading a magazine just to see what game was coming out E3. I wanted to know a little bit more about my hobby because I love gaming. Gaming has probably been my number one hobby above anything else. And I play sports. You know what I'm saying? I played football. You know, broke my leg playing football. I played the hell out of baseball, love boxing. So I was always into that stuff. But everything always went back to gaming. I will always just, I was always into gaming. When it was at the arcade, I remember some of my best memories, believe it or not, at my, you know, as my childhood years, was the arcade. You understand know what I'm saying? I have so many memory-specific arcade memories. You know, you know, I remember the day Street Fighter II Championship Edition landed in the pizzeria and how, 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 how big that was for games and stuff like that. Playing Federal Fury, Mortal Kombat. There's just arcades brought so many memories. So gaming has always been my number one hobby. You know, it's, it's possibly provided the most cherished memories out of any other hobby out there, whether it's sports or whatever, okay? Or movies and stuff like that, you know? So because of my favorite hobby, I got into a little bit deeper, 
into the market share the sales and stuff like that now people may wonder well, if you're a gamer why do you care about sales whatever because there was things that was happening i didn't understand and i'll give you some examples like sega 32x which was on the genesis yo i love that fucking device and i thought that shit was going to take off because you know it was just a cheap device that you would pop in on your sega genesis and then you would buy 32x games and the games were off the hook they look so good play so good and i was like man this is dope but it wasn't like you you didn't see a lot of content at the time i didn't understand i'm like damn how come i don't see that many 32x games like what the fuck i had the the sega genesis cd dope loved it you know what i'm saying but i didn't see a lot of content or the games advertised you know had the turbo graphics cd i had turbo graphics 16 um you know the sega saturn you know, I have products that I, I even bought the bazooka on Nintendo and shit like that. You know, I would have a lot of stuff. I had Rob the Robot on, on, on the NES. So I, I bought, well, my parents, more or less at a certain time, bought a lot of stuff. And maybe, you know, with my um, um, for allowance money, I bought stuff on my own. But there was just a lot of stuff that was just so cool to own. And you just, and I was just like, damn, dude, like. Why did this disappear or this went nowhere? And I'm thinking, man, what's going on? I didn't understand. I was ignorant to what was going on. So I wanted to know more, you know? So I was a little older, PS1 and 64 era, and I started learning more about market share. I started learning about industries and sales and all this stuff. And I started seeing the light. I started seeing, oh, shit, so this is what's going on, you know? I knew N64 was not going to outsell the PS1 because I was reading articles on how Nintendo possibly screwed themselves by not going CD. You understand? If I wasn't, if I didn't dive deep into my hobby at that level, I would have not known that. You know, some people didn't know why N64 wasn't as popular as PS1 because they never dived that deep. You know, to them, it was just buy games, whatever. But then they realized, damn, how come, you know, this console gaming all the games and this one isn't? They didn't realize, unless you, unless you were taking your hobby to the next level to understand the industry and the sales, you wouldn't have known that. You know what I'm saying? So depending at what point you entered the industry, you may not have known certain things was happening. I'll give you a perfect example of another example I didn't understand. The crash of 83. I didn't learn that till the PS1 and N64. Um, you know, when I decided to read about it and learn about the industry and stuff like that, that's when I learned about the crash of 83. I didn't know there was a crash of 83. But I was in it. I was part of that as a gamer. I remember with my Atari 52... My dad would buy me games from the store, you know, and back then it was mom and pop stores. We, you know, we would go get our, get our Atari game, put it in our Atari and it wouldn't work like it, nothing. It would do nothing. So we would go back to the store and my dad's, you know, arguing Spanish to the other guy and the guy would just give us another game. We would go back, still didn't work. And we would go back and forth into the store until the guy says, you know, what? here, take four, five, six games. Just leave me alone. And out of those five, six games, only maybe two will work. I didn't know that was part of the crash of 83. I just thought... That it was just, you know, cheap, broken shit that didn't work. But what was happening is there was no quality control in gaming. And, and companies were making games for Atari platforms without Atari's permission. And Atari didn't have a QC process saying that, hey, this is an Atari certified game. That shit didn't exist. So people lost faith in gaming. You know what I'm saying? And that's where Nintendo came with the Nintendo seal quality, you know? Nintendo will sue the hell out of you if you made a game without their permission. You know, every game that you made on Nintendo had to be a seal of quality and you couldn't put on another platform because you had to focus on the Nintendo system. Some people have problems with that, but the one thing you, you, you learned was Nintendo brought out quality games and you know what I'm saying? Of course, it had its issues. If you remember blowing this, putting alcohol, putting it in the freezer, it had little shit like that. But for the most part, it was nowhere near as bad as what Atari went through or the crash of 83. But I didn't know that at all. I didn't find that shit out till like two decades later or whatever. Yeah, it was 83. I didn't learn that shit till like around the PS1 and 64 came out. So this was like 96, 97. So yeah, 83, 93 is 10 years. So like 13 years later and shit like that. Had no idea that I was a gamer that was part of the crash of 83, you know? So what I'm trying to say is if you don't know, then, you, you know, because you didn't go in and, and learn about the side of industry that keeps it running, then you wouldn't know you'd be going through some things, okay? And I think that's the situation with 
with some Xbox gamers and this whole Japanese support on the Xbox One platform. I think you guys, some of you were Xbox gamers on 360, and, you know. A lot of you weren't on the OG Xbox, and I'm, we're going to talk about that why. But I think a lot of you got your 360, but you weren't in or learn about the industry as you are now. You guys decided to take your knowledge to the next level, learn about Phil Spencer, learn about sales and, you know, third-party deals and what a first-party developer is and a second-party developer. And a lot of you are learning about that now, but you didn't learn about that during the 360 era or even um, the OG Xbox era. You didn't learn about it then. So, 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 so kind of like me, how I didn't understand why certain things was happening during the Genesis era, you know, during Atari era, you know, I didn't know anything until I actually learned. I think some of you guys are in the same scenario. So why I'm getting with this. Japanese support on the Xbox One. Let's, let's, let's go back to this. OG Xbox comes out in 2001, right? By the end of 2005 or near 2005, before the 360 came out, four years on the market, Xbox, OG Xbox sold around 23 million. That was it, okay? Uh, and as a disclaimer, I'm not here to bash the console or any console, whatever. This is just information. And this is information you could just look on Google and whatever. It's, I'm not telling you anything that's crazy or lies or whatever. OG Xbox sold around 20-something million. 22 to 25. It was similar to what GameCube sold. Some people say I sold the GameCube. Some people say GameCube I sold it. It's so close that when you compare both to the PS2, which ended up selling 150 million, it doesn't really matter if Xbox was at 25 and GameCube was at 23 or vice versa. It was in the 20s, low 20s, okay? So 360 comes out, or 360 is about to come out. The man behind it is Peter Moore, who worked for Sega, and... Peter Moore understood that if they need to take 360 to the next level and become a force in the market industry, you have to attract the PS2 gamer. That's just the reality. You know, like I said, the PS2 gamer, the PS2 sold 150 million consoles. It is the king of console market share. You know, it's, it sold over 1 billion software. It is, when you think of console gaming, it was the PS2. Everybody had a PS2. It monopolized console gamers. PlayStation 2 monopolized it. PlayStation 2 owned pretty much the majority, huge majority of console gamers. So if 360 need to take that market share, in order to be in order to move his numbers up, you gotta go after the PS2 gamers. That's just Peter Moore saw that, right? So Peter Moore saw that it has to be a combination of what games, of what the type of games PlayStation 2 gamers like, plus what 360 can bring to the table, plus its online network. Plus a competitive price. You had to hit all those wickets. And he did. Right? Obviously, Xbox 360 came out at $400. Right? Which was $200 cheaper than PS3. Check in the box one. Good online system that, that people could relate to. Check in the box two. And then games that um, PlayStation gamers can relate to. And that was that's where he hit the nail. So, obviously, we know 360 took games like Devil May Cry, Final Fantasy, uh, the biggest thumb of them all, Madden. Uh, I mean, not Madden, Grand Theft Auto, I'm sorry, Grand Theft Auto. You know what I'm saying? Day one. That was huge. You know what I'm saying? Also, what Xbox could bring to the table. What Xbox brought to the table was a lot of exclusives that were, that were generally PC-centric, like Bioshock. I know, and I'll grant it. Now, eventually, games like Bioshock went to the PS3, but that was like a year later. They came out first on Xbox 360. So, Bioshock, Mass Effect, Elder Scrolls, you know, games that would normally only be on PC, he made sure, hey, console's going to get some love too now. We, we're going to bring some PC gamings onto console, so that way console gamers can enjoy these games too. You know what I'm saying? And then finally, Japanese games. Now, some people are saying, well, 360 didn't get Japanese games till late in this, in this cycle, and that's not true. Like 2009, that's not a true statement at all. And I'm going to tell you some of the games Xbox 360 got within its first three years. You know, because 360 launched in 2005. So we're going to name you all the stuff from 2005 to 2008. 
You got Lost Odyssey, which was 2007. And that was an exclusive from the maker of Final Fantasy. And a lot of his um, people that he worked for designing the music were original Final Fantasy um, crew. Blue Dragon, 2006. And I have the list here. Tales of Vesperia, which at the time during that console gen was the best Tales game. That was early 2008. Last Remnant, 2008. Ninja Gaiden Black, I mean Ninja Gaiden 2, 2008. Dead or Alive 4. Um, damn, my boy, was that what, 2005 or something like that? Damn, I scribbled. Got chicken scratch. I'll look that up again. Virtual Fighter 5, 2007. You know what I'm saying? And there was a lot more that I could write down. The point is, within the first three years, 360 was doing a better job getting Japanese support, believe it or not, than the PS3. PS3 tried to launch with, and we call it agree, if, if you remember, for those that do remember, PS3, Sony tried to chase the Halo crowd and stuff like that. And, and I'm going to tell you what I mean. Because you saw Resistance was like a launch title. And then you got Motorstorm. And then you have Ratchet and Clank. But if you look at PlayStation 3's library, the first two years or so, it was a lot of Western games, which is nothing wrong with that. But if you're trying to bring over the PlayStation 2 crowd onto the PlayStation 3, you got to look at what made PlayStation 2 popular as well. And a lot of the PlayStation 2 members were PlayStation 1, right? Now, you had a lot of Western games too, but PlayStation 2, PlayStation 1 undoubtedly had a lot of Japanese support, all right? Peter Moore knew that's who you have to go after. He struck gold because whatever for whatever reason, Sony was focused on Blu-ray, hyping the cell processor, and trying to get Western games so that way they could have their own Halo and stuff like that. And that shit fell them miserably, you know? While Peter Moore is bringing out Japanese games, making exclusives, that making games that were exclusive to PS3 and turning them into multi-plats, like again, like Devil May Cry, um, Final Fantasy, and shit like that, and then bringing on PC gaming. Like Bioshock, Mass Effect, and stuff like that. So he hit this huge trifecta of games where PlayStation 2 gamers can jump ship. I would like to call the mass ex- exodus, you know, this huge mass exodus of PS2 gamers jumping onto 360 because they're getting everything. They're getting, you know, the Xbox games, you know, like Halo, Forza, and Gear- now Gears, a new one. Now they're able to play some PC games, which they never did before, you know, like Bioshock type games and, you know, Elder Scrolls, Mass Effect, but they still get to keep their Japanese games. You know what I'm saying? That's the key. Xbox 360 provided Japanese games to a crowd who's used to playing Japanese games. Now, make no mistake, the real OG Xbox, Halo always been around since day one on OG Xbox, on Xbox, so... PlayStation 2 gamers didn't jump on 360 because of Halo and Forza. Because they were already there on the OG Xbox. The OG Xbox had two Halos. Had Halo 1 and Halo 2. Halo 2 having the Xbox Live multiplayer. You have Forza and you had Fable. Okay? And OG Xbox had... Obviously, they had Xbox Live, which was factually... I mean... I know some people say Xbox Live is better than, than PS4 now and stuff like that. And you always had that argument. But during the PS2 OG Xbox era, it, it, it wasn't even an argument. It, it just wasn't. The PS2 online setup was terrible. Uh, and we're not even talking about, you know, dumb fanboy stuff. We're talking like real shit. Like, for example, it didn't have a universal login. Like, each publisher had their own username and password. You know, it's like trying to sign in into multiple different email accounts and shit. EA had their own password. So if I'm playing an EA game, I had a username and password for that. But then when I go over to like a Sony, like a first party game, I may not even have the same name because it's like signing up for a new account. So the friends I made playing Madden, I can't play SOCOM with unless, you know, I knew them personally over some type of like email or phone number and stuff like that. And then I had to figure out what their name is on SOCOM, you know. And then Ubisoft games and Capcom games. Every publisher had their own account. And, mo- and a lot of them, I didn't have the same name. So I didn't have Port Rock 77 on every single account. It would be completely different depending on the publisher because somebody may have taken that name away. It was, it was a mess. It was just a mess. And, the, and then the, 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 the Xbox Live, I played most of the online games on Xbox Live, on OG Xbox. The only games online that I played on the PS2 
I was on multi platforms of sports games like Madden and, and basketball, and that's only because of the controller. And, and, and I know that sounds weird, like, oh my God, uh, some people feel the Xbox controller was better than, than the PS2 controller. It was for like shooters and stuff, but not for sports games. Only because the, like the controller S didn't have four shoulder buttons. I'm sorry for going in. It didn't have these four. It was just two triggers, but the face on the Xbox controller, man, I wish I had a controller, was actually six buttons. You had the YBXA and the black and white button, but it was all on the face. So, like, you know, some moves, I said if I went to the speed burst and stiff arm and Madden, you couldn't do it because they were all mapped to the six buttons here, and my thumb can't hit two buttons at the same time. On the PS2, you can hit a top button and this and do the move at the same time. That's why with 360, they went with four shoulder buttons. It was more easier to control and stuff like that. So that's why I play Madden in basketball, simply because of the four shoulder buttons that the PS2 DualShock had and the controller S didn't have. But everything else was on the OG Xbox. All right. So OG Xbox had Halo. Two of them had Forza. Had superior multiplats. The hardware was better because they had a, a 10 gig hard drive while the PS2 was still using memory cards. It was just an all round better console in design. With a better online network, and it had um, Halo and stuff like that. So why did it only sell 23 million? Well, like I said, I told you I was part of. I, not I say part, but I was. I got into the industry in terms of learning about it with sales and all that during the PS1 and 64, which carried over to the PS2 era. And then with the introduction of the internet, because I got my first computer and access to the internet in 2000, so that's when I started like researching over the internet. In 2000, I, I stumbled upon forums and stuff like that, like GameSpot forums and all, you know, one up forums and all this stuff. And man, fanboys were brutal back then. PS2 gamers did not like Xbox, they, they, they did not get Xbox. Xbox got the fucking short end of the stick. You got you guys think you guys had it, but I, I would say it's not, it's, it's probably worse now because of Twitter and social media is bigger. But back then, like you, you, you would read multiple forums, it was pretty bad for you guys. Like, Halo was getting no props from the PS2 or the PS4 or even the Nintendo crowd. Nobody was giving props to Halo because everybody was on the first-person shooter, plays better on mouse and keyboard. Nobody plays shooters on controllers. So PS2 gamers, Nintendo gamers, and PC gamers would rag on Xbox gamers who, who try to bring up and say, oh, Xbox is shit because we got Halo, and everybody would just make fun of, make fun of them. All three fanboys. Nintendo fanboys, PlayStation fanboys, PC, they will all make fun of Xbox dudes. Who anybody any Xbox dude that try to bring up a shooter will get will get reamed. Because at the time, shooters wasn't acceptable on, on consoles as much. Even though it was popular and it was so great, you know, and people were playing LAN parties on in the forum. You know how fanboys are. They don't give a shit about reality or whatever. They would just rag on the Xbox fanboys. I mean the Xbox dudes. Because shooters belong on PC, mouse and keyboard, best precision. If you're a real shooter fan or you're a real competitive gamer, you would play on mouse and keyboard and all that stuff, all right? So PS2 gamers, a majority was not all on the Xbox, Halo, Forza stuff, especially with Forza and Gran Turismo. It was just, it was just a battle battle. But then the mass exodus happened, simply because Sony wasn't on their game. They lost focus. They lost the plot. They didn't jump on the Japanese support like they were supposed to. They were more focused on trying to trying to find their their Halo. They try to grab more Western support, and 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 the PC gamers weren't having that. They're like, we're gonna pay six hundred dollars, no Japanese games. The games that you do have, the genre is better on Xbox, and Xbox is taking over, or I wouldn't say taking over, but they're 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 grabbing a lot of PC games. So why they're gonna pay six hundred dollars for a PS3 to? For Blu-ray? For movies? Uh, that wasn't going to work. So then the exodus happened. So you have this huge chunk of PS2 gamers that just left. One of the slogan for Xbox 360 was jump in. You know, as a little pot shot, meaning, hey, jump on board to the 360 train. And it, and it worked. It happened. Huge exodus. The exodus resulted in 360 getting a market share where they had 85 million console sales. And PlayStation, you know, over time held its own, but it went from 150 million juggernaut to around 85 million as well. You know what I'm saying? So pretty much half the market share now belongs to Xbox. 
You know what I'm saying? With a combination of its own games, bringing stuff to PC, and bringing the games that PS PlayStation gamers like. So that's what Xbox 360 was made up of. All right? Now we fast forward to, to the PlayStation 4, Xbox One era. By this point, people are seeing um, that a lot of Japanese development has moved on to you know, mobile gaming or handhelds and stuff. So a lot of the Japanese gamers, you know, gamers, you know, that like these games, we kind of see that, hey, you know, majority is on, on phones and stuff like that. And we get that. So the 360 gamers that move on to Xbox One, you got to remember, it goes back to PlayStation 2. These guys, these guys still have uh, a history with PlayStation 2 or the type of games they like. But because Japanese games moved on to mobile, well, that's our perception, you know, you can't criticize consoles as much, okay? And that was fine, and that was like the stalemate up until PSX, which changed everything. Because now, after seeing PSX, we're seeing a lot of these Japanese games are coming back to console, and more and more are coming. And some of them have big budget within the Japanese realm, like, you know, like Neo and stuff. And these Xbox One gamers who did the mass exodus to 360, who then were originally on the PS2, PS1, that feeling of playing JRPGs and Japanese support is coming back again because they're seeing it is on consoles again. You know what I'm saying? Maybe not as much as mobile, but a lot more than what we've seen over the last three years, and they want in. You know, Now, some of these Xbox One gamers don't have a PS4, probably didn't plan on getting a PS4, probably still can't get a PS4. They probably still want to stay on the ecosystem that they enjoy, but now they realize they're missing something that they had with the 360 and that they had with the PS2, which was Japanese games. And I think that's what some of you are missing out. Some of you are seeing this from your own perspective, meaning, well, I don't care about Japanese games. You know, I buy Xbox because of American games. But this is where the title of the video is. You got to know your history, you know, with the Xbox. Uh, the Xbox grew. You know, 360 became the console generation and grew a mind share of, of 85 million console sales because majority, a lot of gamers were PS2 gamers. You know, like I said, the OG Xbox only sold around 23 to 25 million. 360 got 85 million. That's a 60 million jump. Where did you think that 60 million came from? It came from PS2 gamers. So you have a lot of Xbox gamers, Xbox One gamers, that have their culture or their taste grounded going all the way back to PS2. Many of them going back to PS1, you know? Especially you have a lot more that, that, that could date back to N64, Super NES, Nintendo Entertainment System, Sega Genesis. So their taste for Japanese games never left. You understand what I'm saying? They just accepted it because for a while, it was perceived that a lot of development was just going to stay on, on handhelds. And, and it, you know, it is what it is. But after PSX and the new and the game announcements and all the future games being announced from Japanese developers, they're seeing it's on consoles, but it's not on the console that they have. And they're trying to voice saying, get it on the console that we have, on the console that we want to play on. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and it's not even about making the Xbox One the same as the PS4, because I don't agree with that either. Let the consoles have their own identity. But what they're asking is, can the Xbox One provide the same as the Xbox 360? That's all they're asking for. Because remember, a lot of you got millions of gamers on Xbox One that came from the 360, that came from the PS2. You understand what I'm saying? So they have, an, uh, uh, I don't want to use the word affiliation, but they have something grounded on Japanese games, right? Now, the big talk is 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 sales for Japanese games. All oh, these games don't chart. And I had I had a conversation with Xbox 448 on Twitter, and 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 it's hard to really express what what you're trying to say on Twitter because there's so many characters. And then when you send the message, sometimes it don't flow right. 
And if the person's busy typing their message, they, they could lose the meaning. So I'm going to say it here so he can understand. All right? There's a difference between charting and being a success um, in terms of profits and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? Oh, so my wife. Um, but there's a difference between charting and profit and stuff like that. Um, a game not charting doesn't necessarily mean it's a failure as long as it meets some type of level of profit. If it reached profit, you know, then it's a successful game, even if it didn't chart. Charting doesn't necessarily mean profit. You know what I'm saying? It all depends on what you invest and what you expect out of it. And I use the example of Gravity Rush, right? As you can see, Gravity Rush, maybe in Japan it charted, but nowhere else did it really chart. It didn't chart much anywhere else. But yet, Gravity Rush 2 is coming out in January. Sony greenlighted the sequel. Now, reasonably, if you know, I can't, I don't know what the budget of Gravity Rush is, and I can't tell you what the profit was, but I think it's reasonable to assume that because Sony greenlighted a bigger budget for Gravity Rush 2, because the original Gravity Rush was a Vita game, but now Gravity Rush 2 is a full scale PlayStation 4 game, it's safe to assume that Sony greenlighting the sequel, want to even greenlight a sequel. But also to give it a console level budget means the first one was successful. Because I doubt Sony's going to go, all right, Gravity Rush, you know, we didn't make no money on Gravity Rush. It didn't make no profit. But you know what? Give it a bigger budget and put it on PS4. They're not going to do that. You know, I think it's reasonable to assume the reason why they greenlight Gravity Rush 2 and gave it console level budget treatment for the developer is because... The first one was a success, so now they want to put on PlayStation 2, 4 to see if it even becomes a bigger success. That's how, so that's the real metric of whether a, cons, a game is successful. You know, if you don't see a sequel, probably didn't meet, you know, the grade. They didn't make the grade. You know, that's that's the point where I was trying to make. You know, so I'm saying um, there are games, believe it or not, that some developers and publishers make. And the game needs to sell three million just to fucking break even, which is which is bananas. Because you know, if a game sells two million, two point five million, it could potentially chart. Hell, it might even chart number one on NPD or something. But if it sells two point five million, you need three million just to break even. You're not gonna get a sequel. You know what I'm saying? So charting doesn't necessarily mean success. Uh, it, it, it comes down to profit and how the game does. You know. And a lot of Japanese games, while not charting, make profit because Japanese, they, they, they moderate the type of budget a game gets on, on when they release it. So a lot of Japanese games, they, they profit with just a million sales and they make a huge profit margin. You know what I'm saying? That's just how they develop games. They try to maximize profit with what they put into their products and stuff like that. You know, take a look at Persona 5. You know, it's not a huge console seller. It'll get his million, it'll get his million and a half. But that game's been around since PlayStation 1. It's, it, it survives the test of time, and it makes Atlas huge chunks of money. But it's what they spend in comparison to what they get in terms of sales and stuff. It may not chart, you know, in Europe or in the United States. But it pays the bills and it makes profit and it warrants consistent sequels, you know. And I think a lot of a lot of people this gen don't realize that. I think they see it as if it if it's not in the top ten MPD or in the top ten on the UK charts and stuff like that. Oh, the game is trash. It didn't chart, or I mean, the game is trash. It didn't make money. It's not gonna get a sequel. And yet they see a game that's on top ten and they wonder, damn, this game was top ten MPD. Why didn't it get a sequel? You guys are forgetting. The profit portion and, and, and how much sales the game really needs to make to be relevant for another sequel. All right. So because of this sell stuff, you guys don't see that. By having Japanese developed games, you open up a portfolio and a variety for people to come to your console. You know what I'm saying? Um, you cast a wide net, especially if your predecessors have done it. It would be one thing if Xbox never done this before and never had Japanese games before. It would be something if 360 never had Japanese games before. Okay, that's understandable. You understand what I'm saying? 
Um, it never did it before. So why would you think it's going to do it now? But that's not the case. Xbox always had Japanese support. And it had enough Japanese support to pull PS2 gamers. You know? So that way they're not left out on something they like. So they got the Japanese support that they like. The Japanese games that they like. Plus other stuff. And that's what brought on the success of 360. Um, but now the Xbox One is not even doing what the 360 did. And, and in general, Xbox hasn't been using a lot of strategies that made 360 successful. It's not going after marketing rights. It's not going after the majority of the marketing rights of some of the biggest multi-plats that are out there. It doesn't have the exclusive, the Japanese. It didn't go after Japanese games like, you know, Peter Moore did on 360. The Xbox One didn't push the Xbox Live Arcade on the indie side because 360 was big on arcades. It pushed it a lot. Hell, I remember if you look back, you, you could get games from Burger King on Xbox 360. They, 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 just, they were just... three With 360 and Peter Moore in his first two, three years, he was all over the map on trying to get games onto that console to attract you know as much use as he can. He, he tried whatever he could to pull... Gamers away from the PlayStation brand. And he did it. It was successful. His plan worked and stuff. And he helped set the stage for 360 to be a huge console seller. And pretty much become the console of the generation 360 over the PS3. You know what I'm saying? He took down the juggernaut. You know? So a lot of the strategies Xbox One didn't adopt. And I got it. Donnie Matrix ruined some stuff. And we all know about that. Um... But the main point I'm trying to say is, forget about PS4. Can the X1 do what the 360 did? Because a lot of gamers who jumped on the 360 got that treatment, and they're not getting that treatment anymore. And I know a lot of you don't care, and which is fine. But there are Xbox One gamers that do care, because that's what the 360 provided them. You know, they got it. They got that treatment from the 360, but they're not getting that treatment no more on the Xbox One. And now you're telling them, well, it's an American console. Either deal with it or buy a PS4. But that wasn't the landscape. That that type of mentality wasn't on the 360. No one said 360 was an American console, buy American games, or, or just get the PS3. It wasn't like that. Like I said, some of the games I announced, like Tales of Vesperia, was the best version. It was the best Tales on console. You know what I'm saying? Lost, you know, and I mentioned some exclusives that were Japanese and stuff. And then, and then over time, you even got more. You got, you know, Ninja Blade, and there was just a lot more. Even OG Xbox had a lot of Japanese support. So that, that so the whole Win American console, if you don't like it, go get a PS4. It wasn't like that on 360. And Peter Moore would have not thought like that because he knew if 360 had to get big, you need to attract the PS2 game. That's just the fact. That was just it, you know? Having that mentality of think about it. If 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 you say 360 is American console, go on PS4 if you don't like it and get your Japanese games there. Those gamers will go on PS4 and guess what? They'll still get their American games. We'll still get the Call of Duty. You'll still get the Elder Scrolls. You'll still get the Mass Effects. You'll still get the Red Dead Redemption. Hell, Sony's taking marketing rights to those games to American games. You know what I'm saying? And that's what makes a huge console seller when the console provides the best of both worlds, multiple variety that everyone can appeal to. All right? Um, that list of PlayStation 4 games coming next year, I, I, that list, I like eight games. You know what I'm saying? There's eight games out of the list. It's not every single game that I like or every Japanese game that I like. There's a few of them that I like. But it's a choice. It's my choice to say I want it or don't want it. You know what I'm saying? Most of you are saying, well, I don't like those games. Which is fine, but on Xbox, it doesn't matter if you don't like them. You, you can't get them on some of those exclusives. You don't have a choice. You understand what I'm saying? So there's a difference between seeing a game and saying, I don't like it because you choose not to like it, and yet the choice is done for you. You understand what I'm saying? Um, that's just the reality. It's kind of like, you know, with EA Access on PS4. A PlayStation 4 gamer could say, I don't like EA Access. Well, it doesn't matter if you like it or not. You, you don't have the choice to get it. So it doesn't, it's irrelevant, you know what I'm saying? Uh, an Xbox One gamer could say, I don't like EA Access and choose not to pay for it. But for those that do like it, you have the choice to pay for it. You know what I'm saying? So it's the same type of logic. 
saying something you don't like something, but it's not on your console, it's irrelevant. You don't get the choice. You're not going to get the game even if you did, you know? So to tell Xbox One gamers, you know, this is an American console, which doesn't really mean anything because video games ain't supposed to be divisive when it comes to a culture. It, it, it doesn't mean anything, you know? Western games, Japanese games, European games, you know, Canadian games, it doesn't matter. It's just games. And the console manufacturer's job is to try to get as much on their platform so that way the gamers can have a choice in, in what they want to play, if that makes sense. All right? Um, that's Because that's just at the end. So you got Xbox One gamers who jumped to 360 when they were on PS2 and played PS1. But now they're on Xbox One, they're not getting that same flavor. Sure, they're getting great games like Sunset Overdrive and stuff like that. You know, they got those games and stuff like that, whatever. But there's, but if they're missing a genre or Japanese development that they feel they should get because they had it before, I don't see why they should be bashed for that or the community should be looking at that. And I understand Microsoft's trying to do the best they can. You know, it's not the end of the world. I think everybody's trying to treat this as the end of the world. But it's just criticism. That's all it is. No different than people criticize PlayStation 3 for... I mean, PlayStation 4 for being sparse or PlayStation 3 for being a $600 Blu-ray player with no games. It's, it's criticisms all across the board and stuff like that. I'm not trying to convince for those who are watching my video are Xbox dudes and don't give a shit about Japanese development. I'm not trying to convince you to like them. You know what I'm saying? If, you're, if you love the, the Xbox the way it is, then that's perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, at the end of the day, you bought it for your own personal taste. But what I'm trying to convey to you guys is is understanding of why some Xbox One owners are saying the things they're saying, you know. And majority of them, a lot of them are not fanboys. They're not doing it to antagonize you. You have to understand where they come from. And, I, and, and some of you may not have known that a lot of Xbox One gamers are PlayStation 2, PlayStation 1 gamers. And the reason why they became Xbox gamers isn't because of Halo or Forza. It's because the 360 did a better job of getting the games they wanted. You know what I'm saying? The 360 for like the first three years or four years did a better job of being a PS, a PlayStation console than an actual PlayStation 3 did. You know what I'm saying? With these games. So they moved on to 360 because they still got what they wanted. But now that they moved on, not moved on, but now that they stood in that ecosystem of Xbox One and they've seen these Japanese games are going to exclusively on PlayStation 4, now they're like, oh, shit, you know, now they're missing something that they always had. You know, they always had it, whether it was with the PlayStation 1, whether it was with the Nintendo Entertainment System, the Super NES, PlayStation 1, PlayStation 2, Xbox 360, they always had that choice and flavor that they were to do. But now they don't have it as much on the Xbox One. Hopefully things will get better. Hopefully Phil Spencer hears this because I know he's a busy man. He's trying to... You know, he's trying to, you know, Xbox One had a rough start, you know, so so he, he, he got into he got into a generation where Xbox One was behind the power curve, you know what I'm saying? Because of what of what Donnie Matrick did and all that shit. So he's trying to make things better. And maybe he is trying to get Japanese games. Maybe, you know, it's just taking them longer uh, to fully develop the platform and relationships with Japan and convince them, hey, you know, we got Xbox gamers who who who, who want JRPGs, so, you know, money, funding, but he's taking one step at a time, and I think right now, Scorpio is a priority in trying to get that launch and, you know, trying to make it smooth, and, you know, who knows, maybe after Scorpio, he'll now put focus on foreign developed games and shit like that, so there's still opportunity. I think this gen still got a lot of legs, especially now that we have refreshed consoles, the Pro and soon the Scorpio, I think those two consoles will extend the life of this generation. I think there's going to be like a eight-year generation all over again. Um, I can see... I can see next-generation consoles not coming out until, like, 2019, 2020, 2021, simply because of these refresh consoles. So, you know, he could still be in the works and stuff like that, you know? But I don't think Xbox dudes who don't care about Japanese games should be too hard on the Xbox One gamers that do. Because remember, a lot of Xbox gamers came from the PlayStation 2 fan base and the 360 delivered on Japanese games. So it's not like they're asking for something they never had before. They had it. 
They had an Xbox console that provided great Japanese games. They had it. It wasn't. It's not a new concept. All right. I just named you a few now. I can name you a lot more if you want me to. Just hit me up on Twitter. But the 360 was a beast with Japanese support. I think the one common thread with every console that we could consider the best console of that generation, it. I think the one common thread at this point is it had great Japanese support. It had great support all around across every region, but it had great Japanese support. And people gravitated to that. And it doesn't have to be a top 10 chart killer. You know what so I'm saying? Again, it just has to be profitable and, and accessible to give gamers the choice. You know, even if it's just like four, you know, 700,000 gamers that buy the game, if that's what, if the game is successful, profitable with just 700K, 800K, then you're good, you know. Not every game is gonna be a Halo seller or whatever. You know what I'm saying? So that's 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 my point uh, on the whole Japanese support on Xbox. It doesn't have to be a PS4, but for millions of gamers who are Xbox One owners, many of them are rooted from the PS1, PS2 days, you know. Um, and they're not asking for anything more than what they used to have it, especially from the 360. They're used to having these type of games. So they're not, they're not, you know, they're not being fanboy. They're just trying to, they're just trying to get what they always had, you know, and the platform that they prefer right now. That's it. That's all it is. But anyway, that's, that's just, that's just my video. This just my opinion. I don't know how long it took. This is like a 46 minute video. So I apologize if it's too long for you. Uh, but I think this was a big topic and stuff like that. Um, but I appreciate you listening to this stuff and stuff. Uh, but there's no way for me to cut this down to 15 minutes, 10 minutes. It's just too much uh, and too big of a topic on this stuff. Um, overall, is this the end of Xbox? No, because it's just, you know, everybody likes to to exaggerate on YouTube and on Twitter um, for the excitement, for the entertainment, for the bullshitting, trying to troll. We could, you know, we all know. Uh, Xbox is going to do what Xbox is going to do, and it's going to provide... The entertainment that Xbox gamers want. Um, and it is what it is. It's not the end of the world and stuff. But anyway, this is your boy Porter Rock. Um, just giving you my opinion on this. Uh, comment, subscribe. You know, give comments. I try to reply to comments. Hit me up on Twitter. Um, Porter Rock 77, you know, Porter Rock underscore age and stuff. Um, subscribe to the channel. Hit the comments. Let me know what you think. And again, I apologize for how long this video turned up. But I think it's one of those important topics that I had to put my two cents in and hopefully you learn something and stuff like that all right um but anyway I'm out you take care I'm about to get back to uh, you see that that's the last guardian and stuff I'll probably have a quick review of the game when I'm done with it but anyway um if I don't make another video for the year I want to wish you all a Merry Christmas and Happy New Year I wish all you guys a safe holiday season and stuff um I hope more games come along your way and you enjoy gaming and enjoy your time with your friends and family and just, you know, just enjoy everything. And just, you know, um, I respect all you gamers and stuff like that. You know, I, I, I do pot shots in Twitter and I talk a little shit on Twitter and stuff like that. But I want you to know I don't mean no harm on anybody. And I, I definitely don't want you to feel that I'm trying to make you guys feel bad about your choice. You know, at the end of the day, if you enjoy gaming, that's it. Whether it's on one console, on 50 platform, it doesn't matter. You know, you pick up a controller and you enjoy your shit. And I'm cool with that. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, you guys take care. Um, thanks for looking at the video. If you actually watched the whole video, I appreciate it. And I hope I was able to provide good information and not waste your time and stuff like that. All right? Well, anyway, if I don't make another video, I'll see you guys in January. And Happy New Year. All right? Take care. Pull the rock out.